case, if you guys cross train with each other and that's it, you guys just help each other prepare, you know, I think you have to fight. You know, I, I, I truly do. Like there there's some guys I've trained with in the past. If I got offered to fight them right now, I would just go yes, yeah, right away. Welcome to Champions Battlefield, the show where we meet with champions and discuss their stories of overcoming adversity. I'm Trevor Carroll. With me is my broadcast partner, Jamak Galshani. In studio today, we have former BFL Pro Bantamweight champion, Jamie Siraj, who's going to tell us a little bit more about his story. Hey, Jamie. How's it going, Jamie? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. How's training going? Training's going amazing, man. You're over at TriStar with... Uh, with um the new location they have, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm training at uh, TriStar Vancouver with uh, Cajun Johnson, and I'm still at my home base at uh, Revolution Fight Team with you know Jeremy Kennedy, Bibiano Fernandez, and those guys too. So you so. spend time at both gyms now? Yeah, nice. yeah. I'm I'm at both gyms every day. So you yeah. are you training for a particular fight coming up? Um, tentatively, there there's some in the works for October, okay. but I mean. Nothing's ever official to you yeah, in yeah, the cage, yeah. right? So You're always training, right? I'll, always training, always nice. helping the guys. Cajun's getting ready for his fight in UFC. In oh, that's uh, right. He's got in Edmonton, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, I'm going to be going down helping him uh, corner him for that fight. Yeah. I was um, looking at, uh, I think it was an Instagram picture or something. He looks shredded. He looks oh, like yeah. He's ready he to go. Yeah, <laughs> he's, uh, he's in shape for this. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to be a good performance. Exciting, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really Are exciting you going down with him? or? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be in his corner for this oh, nice. fight. Oh, so, yeah. nice. Awesome. Yeah, so who else is there with you in his corner? Uh, it's going to be me and Bill Mahood. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's the three generations. That is awesome, man. Yeah, it's going to be a cool cow. corner. You're yeah. looking forward to that, eh? Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm more just excited for him to finally yeah. uh, get back in there. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. he's just cursed with bad luck with injuries <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. He's like a band-aid, we got to keep him healthy. <laughs> awesome, man. Let's let's learn about you. Where, tell me a little bit about where you were born, if you were born in Canada, where you grew up. Just Let's just start early and... Yeah, dive in. yeah. I was born and raised in Chilliwack, British Columbia. Okay, and then I lived there till I was uh, eighteen. Nice. And then brothers, sisters. Yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. So Parents been busy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of cold winters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I have an older sister, Sarah. She's uh, twenty-four. Okay. And then I have two half sisters. Uh, Riley and Morgan. So Riley's eleven, Morgan's okay. nine. Wow, you got a nine-year-old sister. Yeah, yeah, they're them. they're amazing. They're That's such awesome. good kids. And then I have a little brother, um, who's same mom, different dad. Okay. So yeah. How old is the brother? Uh he's seven now. Oh, really? Y young. Yeah, yeah. Holy smokes! You know older brothers to beat on you, huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, exactly. I had to toughen him up. <laughs> 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 what about with your sister? Did you guys used to fight and? Yeah, a little more arguing. I would just kind of yeah. let them hit me, and yeah, you know, yeah, it must be different. It's a different dynamic. Yeah, 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 a lot of sisters. A lot of times, I'm pissed off trying <laughs> to get in the bathroom <laughs> in the morning, but yeah, yeah, competing yeah. for that. Space. Yeah, That's exactly. Crazy, man. Well, uh, were you into sports when you were young, like in in school? Yeah, well, I competed as uh, I well, I competed in Taekwondo. Okay. Um, I started doing that when I was about seven years old. Seven years old, man. Yeah. Was it your parents that put you in? Was it you? It, you? it was my mom. Okay. It, it was my mom. She put me in. Um, I really liked it, but uh, I didn't quite find like the love for it like yeah. I did when I eventually. Do you know if she put you in? Was there a, like what was her motivation? Was he was she trying to protect you? Was it a you know, school bullying thing. What was the deal? Because I find with a lot of parents, it's, you know, they don't just sign up their kids for martial arts. There's always some sort of a motivation behind it. Right. Because typical parents will put you into soccer and football and rugby and, you know, something like that. Not. <laughs> not yeah. Like yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I think, I think she just, m maybe it was like the discipline aspect of yeah, it. Right. Nice. Just, uh, just incorporating like a lot of, good values in me at a young age yeah. and uh, yeah she was really on top of that too and she my mom she was a troublemaker growing up too so oh she yeah. she never would let me be that person who gets bullied or get punked okay, around okay. so, so yeah, she, she, she was the protective yeah yeah, yeah she wanted like to toughen me up yeah. early so she's like you can do combat sports nice nice how long did you do taekwondo for i did it for four years oh and wow and then uh yeah just so it was you said you you were competing what was that that feeling of competition, did you enjoy that? Uh, yeah, I did. It, 
it made me so nervous, especially at that age, because yeah. I was always the the smaller kid oh, too, I bet, yeah. right? I was a I was a really small kid. I didn't start growing until I was about 18, 19. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I was a little shit. And then uh, I was always competing against people that were twice my size. Bigger than you, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I did good. I won I won gold at two tournaments, nice. and then I took uh, I took a silver at another. So yeah. Oh, so you had well. you had that toughness in you even even as a young young kid. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to try to not get fucked <laughs> around. <laughs> Grew up in Chilliwack. There's awesome. a lot of knuckleheads. So, <laughs> so you're doing Taekwondo, and then and then tell me the story of how you got into MMA. Um, it was I really just found when I was about thirteen, fourteen. I needed yeah. a healthy release in my life. Yeah, and. Uh, I just happened to stumble upon like a UFC fight that was happening on the TV, and nice. I I never watched UFC or anything like that. Was it the Ultimate Fighter show, no, or was, was it just pure UFC? It, it was a UFC. Yeah. It was Paul Taylor versus Paul Kelly, oh. and you see these guys, they're just beating just the yeah. shit out of each other, and they're just covered in blood. And then they're like in the middle of the fight, they're like high fiving each other and saying, <laughs> "I love you." Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, "Oh, yeah. what's this?" Right? It's like because fighting to me is always just that release of anger, yeah, and then to see it being shown in a respectful way it actually was really different intrigued. Huh? it was it intrigued me so yeah. um i went for like a bike ride try to find the closest mma gym to me i found yeah. revolution in uh chilliwack okay revolution martial arts in chilliwack and then uh I met that's where i met cajun johnson and darwin douglas and they really kind of helped cajun must career. have been really young back then right? yeah he was around uh so back then it was he was probably around 24? Yeah. 24, yeah. So kind of like your age now, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he, I remember back then he was fighting in the MFC. So yeah, yeah those early was, days. Yeah, yeah, early days, yeah. So you went in, you just signed up, and you said, I want to do this? or? Yeah, I pretty much from day one, um, I did one occasion to MMA class, mm-hmm. got the living shit beat out of me. And so you had some, you had a little bit of stand up. Obviously, you could yeah. kick, right? Yeah. At least, and then, and then, so you when you when you went in, you went full blown MMA. It was, you know, wrestling, jujitsu, yeah. the whole works, right? Yeah. Right away, I just I jumped jumped into it, um, just pretty much from day one, put all my energy into it, and then at the end of the class, I like started learning more and more about the UFC. Then I started watching Pride mm-hmm. and you start getting, you know, introduced to the guys like Fedor, the Nogueras yeah. and stuff like that. And I, I was just like fascinated by it. And I just became like hyper obsessed nice. about training. And then I remember when I was 14, I, I told my parents, I was like, I'm going to become a professional fighter. This is it for me. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've just been on it ever since. So, so y- just a few minutes ago, you said you were looking for a positive outlet, and that's that's just so happened that the UFC, watching the UFC, showed up at the same time in your life, and you went you went for that bike ride, and you you know you found the gym. But tell me a little bit about that. What was it? Was there a rough patch that you were going through? What was going on in your life at that point in time? Yeah, uh, there's definitely some adversities I had to go through at a young age. I mean. It started off with everything so smooth, and yeah. then it went really bumpy and really to shit. My mom, uh, you know, she's doing a lot better in life now, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm very proud of her for it. But you know, she was getting uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol. Um, this is when did you first realize something was was going on with your mom? When I was about eleven. Wow. When okay. I was about eleven, I just I could see uh, a drastic change. And uh, in, in her attitude, in her and attitude, and just life, and the energy around our house, really ener- energy sensitive from a from a young age. And do you now know if she was going through a rough patch herself, and she just turned to alcohol and drugs for as a solution, or y- you know, I I don't think she's ever, I don't think she ever had an easy life growing up mm. too. So I think there's always everyone fights their own demons, right? Exactly, and everyone's yeah, yeah. gonna fight their own demons in a certain way. So, yeah. um, with her, she she went down the wrong path um you know there was a lot a lot of violence around our house mm. there was a lot of drugs there was a lot of alcohol um sh- strangers like uh, I'll, I'll be honest there's there's drug dealers drug addicts in my house every night mm. um you know I, I remember like just at a young age getting the shit beat out of me by like random people that were just in the house and you know this is when you're 11 years old yeah i was about 11 12, 12 years old. yeah from yeah. when i was about 11 to 13 there was there was guns pointed at me in my own house mm-hmm. and yeah there was there was a lot of heavy shit that happened so 
Okay, so you're you're about eleven years old, twelve years old. Your mom is going through her challenges and and figuring out how to deal with them. What's happening with you? Um, uh, obviously at that age, it's a lot of confusion because mm-hmm. you know my mom has always been my best friend right. but for like the longest time. I, I would do everything with my mom. She would drive me to Taekwondo. She was like. And she's a younger mom, I assume, it from it what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. At the time, she she was in her mid mid twenties. Okay. Uh, around that time, and um, yeah, she's she's been an amazing mom to mm-hmm. me. So it's not like I want to even put her down or anything. Oh, of course yeah, not. Just, yeah, you she's know, taking th- care of you. Yeah, she's exactly. She's you know? she's human. She's yeah, going through exactly, her stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, how far did you get in martial arts? Like, how far did you get in uh, taekwondo? Did you get to a black belt or a green belt or? Uh, I, yeah, I got to a black belt, but the the black belt in in Taekwondo, they you c- you can pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think my mom wanted me to have it for the sake of that accomplishment, but I wasn't. I never wanted to to continue after I, after I got that. that I was it, ne- right? I needed something else in my life. So yeah, yeah. So okay, so you're at that at that point of time you. You're still li- you're with your mom. Your mom's going through her troubles. How do you how do you get out of that? What's happening there? Tell me a little bit about what's happening at that point in time. You, I don't really think I actually got out of it until uh, a, a lot later point in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, more so when I I really decided to make the choice to pursue martial arts right at its fullest but what what i'm saying is when you're when you when that's happening at the house right and you're you're out trying to figure your own thing out at the age of 12 13 is there any period of time where you feel like okay i'm on my own i need to figure this yeah, out d- definitely um when's th- that that was around when i was 13 years old mm-hmm. i, I re- that's when things were getting really bad yeah and uh the only person else that was really in the picture was my bigger sister and uh, my grandma. And okay, then so they're taking care of you. Yeah, yeah, you know, what me and my sister kind of taking care of each other, right? Mm-hmm. And we're both not liking the situation. And my grandma is obviously she's an amazing grandma. She she wanted to be there for us. Yeah. Um, and then I started at a young age. I I got heavily addicted to alcohol, and okay. uh, so young as in twelve, thirteen. Yeah, about thirteen years old. Okay. I was. Uh, I was drinking every day because that was the one thing that was around the house was the time, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah was was alcohol and uh, you know I started smoking weed and just getting into a lot of trouble mm-hmm. um, getting into fights all the time and yeah what's happening at school are they noticing yeah things are going south with you definitely there is uh, I ended up getting put in like a, um. Uh, like an interview process where mm-hmm. police were coming in asking me what's going on at the house and you know there's the counselors getting involved and um, the school actually ended up paying for for counseling sessions for okay. me to to want to talk talk to people and um, yeah it was just a lot of figuring out to do at a young age mm-hmm. and now how far tell me the worst part like this sounds like a downworld sp- word spiral that just continues to go down tell me the bottom like wha- when did you when do you when do you feel like you hit the bottom when i was 14 years old sleeping on a playground and mm. drank i don't know how much alcohol that night and i had no no food at home and yeah i i definitely felt i was alone i didn't know where my sister was either mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I I only had friends really growing up. Um, my uh, my grandma, I wasn't living at her house fully at this time, so uh, my mom wasn't always around. So it was, yeah, it, I was I was by myself on a playground sleeping on the school where I went to, mm-hmm. and I just thought like, what the fuck, and <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I was I was by myself. I remember like crying by myself and. Mm-hmm. I, I, for me, that's all I ever wanted was my mom around, yeah. you know, and then that kind of, was she still around or was she, she was around, but I mean, being there and being and your being mother, there too, you know, right, two right. they're two different things. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'd see her, she was on, you know, substances and I didn't really get that, that, that attention, connection, and love y- that you, you know, yeah, I, I didn't get that. So 
it was uh it was difficult to deal with now when you're going through all this are you still going to the gym and training yes okay y- yeah are your coaches noticing that something is happening are you yeah. what's happening there at the gym are they are they helping you yeah um i i owe so much thanks to three different people um harley chapel who is my main jiu-jitsu coach mm-hmm. he actually knew what my family was like too mm-hmm. he he knew he knew of them so he he knew before i think right away when i told him who my mom and my family was he he knew what was going on okay and then darwin douglas he actually uh, invited me into his home and he's, a, he's a great guy he's man. an amazing yeah. guy and he i really do not think i would be where i am today without darwin uh he helped me through i think maybe the the shittiest time i've ever gone through when mm-hmm. i was homeless and I remember. At what point in time were you homeless? And how how did it happen? I mean, I, it, it just uh, there was like a quarter <laughs> where I couldn't I couldn't live with my mom anymore mm-hmm. because of just all the all Everything things that, that were happening on. at the house, and then I started living with my dad and my stepmom, mm-hmm. and then there was there was troubles just there, mm-hmm. um, not so much with the drugs and alcohol, just just you know it's adapting to a new yeah, life yeah, yeah, and absolutely. everything, so. And I wasn't, pr- I probably wasn't the easiest kid to deal with <laughs> at mm-hmm. that time too because of, because of my troubles. And then they just got to a point where they thought my behavior was unacceptable and, uh, just kicked you out. Yeah. G- okay. Got the boot. And then, um, so you were on the street on your own. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. I, s- I, I told them I had a place to go to and then I would just, uh, go sleep at the gym mm-hmm. and then Darwin gave me a key and then, uh, I stayed there one night and he said, Hey, like you come stay at the house and everything and you know he, he set rules early and he, he yeah you can't fuck around with darwin yeah Douglas. darwin <laughs> Douglas will whoop <laughs> my ass I am, yeah. I was, especially at that time of my life i was not gonna fuck around so yeah i uh so I he kind of took the role of like a father figure definitely in, uh, in your life yeah. definitely yeah he uh he w- welcomed me to his home and like it was just amazing too well, it's not just Darwin. I mean, I mean, Francine. Fra- Francine. She literally yeah. is like I call her all the time. Like she is like when people ask me who my mom is, I I a lot of time mention her name yeah. because she just like not even so much with just giving me the home, but like just I could vent to her and talk to her about things, and she would just give me like the best advice. Right. And I she did everything. Like she did so much for me. She they gave me a job at their gym. Mm-hmm coaching they gave me like a great salary so i could have money to start saving up to get my own place and everything like that um they gave me like opportunities for for so many coaching jobs um they were there for me everything like that so i mean so things started to turn around yeah it definitely as a result I of I the support I, I definitely think so i think when i got introduced to that family my life started to, to yeah. change yeah and we're we're always as you know we're always like in this in this program we're always looking for ways that people can can get out of trouble right get out of the the mess that they're in and start to climb their their way up and your story it sounds like it just it's through the relationship that that your coach darwin douglas had built with you and um, they could they could uh, lend out a helping hand but at the same time you were accepting of that help yeah right because there's a lot of times where people are trying to help us but we're just whether it's our ego, that's just too much, and and we can't, we, we can't. The the hand is there, just reach out and yeah. grab it. We're like, no, I can survive on my own. Yeah, right. I, I d- and there w- there's been plenty of people that came in my life and and helped me. It was like they try to help, and I definitely you didn't accept it. it right. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm self sufficient. I'm on my own. I'm yeah. 15 years old. Well know? It's it's also yeah. something I think about about that coaching i mean i've never done any other type of sports but in martial arts when you you have your coach and you're just so much discipline and respect and everything that's there and maybe that has something to do with it it's like do it you know? definitely <laughs> well uh, yeah it also <laughs> helped too just the amount of respect that i had for darwin yeah you know like he uh he was right away coming to the gym and they uh, they could they obviously just knew i didn't have the money mm-hmm. for for teaching uh, or for for paying my Tuition, my yeah. tuition there so they just said hey you just you help clean up the gym every night you mop up and i mean they would hold pads for me they would give me private lessons they just did so That's much awesome. to help me and cajun as well cajun was coaching out of that time about two or three days a week and then he would tell me he's like hey show up before all the classes we'll get our pad work in well i'll, nice. sh- I'll show you technique so i got world-class knowledge along with 
just amazing people. So that's support. I, I found when when I met those those people, you know, Darwin, Cajun, Francine, Harley. Mm-hmm. That's where my life really started to turn around for awesome. the better. Awesome. Yeah. When was did you your first fight? Sounds like from what I can see is around. 15 years old, right? Like yeah. it looks like you're training for a couple of years with with Revolution. Yeah. And then what what happened? Did you try did you decide to compete or or Darwin say like you're ready, let's get you in there and see what you can do? Yeah, so I was I was training for about a little over a year okay. at that point. And then I really wanted to fight. I wanted to you fight wanted the, the fight. I wanted to fight the the day I walked in there. They said, <laughs> "No, <laughs> like <laughs> this, just take your time. It's okay." And I'm like, "All right, all right." I just kept listening to them, kept training. Yeah. And then about a year after I was training with them, they said, "Hey, we have an opening for a fight," and uh, it was about four or five weeks notice. Mm. And it's up in Prince George, and I'm like, "Yeah, sweet, let's do it." And then they're like, "Okay, you're gonna fight this." Uh, you're gonna fight this twenty-year-old in oh his wow. home. Like, you're gonna fight this twenty-year-old in his hometown. Yeah. Um, he's had some experience, but like, yeah, let's. Were you nervous? I was super nervous. <laughs> Same <laughs> sort of nerves you had as a kid the before competition. Worse, worse. <laughs> yeah, because this is a big crowd. Right? Yeah. There's about two thousand people there that yeah. night, and then uh, I'm in the guy's hometown too, and uh, y- yeah, I was in. Ner- I remember just before the fight, I started warming up like three hours before I fought (laughs) (laughs) just 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 like shadow boxing just uh uh like just looking at the ring and looking at all the people walking in I was like holy shit all right well let's let's do this then nice you you won that fight right yeah I I, uh won by TKO in the first round Mm. yeah I just in the first round yeah must have been was nice it and quick? <laughs> yeah, it? wasn't a lot yeah. of technique being utilized. It was I pretty much went up there, just attacked right away, yeah. and then uh, managed to get him in full mount, and I just started punching him until the ref stopped it. Nice. Now yeah. you had your first loss pretty early in your sort of amateur career coming up. Did that have have an effect on you, or was that was that easy? You were so young that you just you know it was it was a part of it. No, it it had a huge effect. It did. Yeah. Well I tell yeah. me about it. You know, I, I just feel like because martial arts was, like, the one thing in my life that, mm. in, in like, put confidence in me yeah. and made me feel good about myself. And I had such high expectations from a young age mm-hmm. that when I, uh, when I lost that fight, I was, I was gutted. I was, I was crushed. And it was, I- it was in my hometown, too. Yeah. So that, that, di- that was just the, the cherry on top of it. Uh, I was, I was really upset when I lost that fight. And, um. What did you do? Was it? I remember that night I ate a whole ice cream cake to myself <laughs> and got drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was not not having a fun time yeah. that night. Yeah, I. Uh, How'd you bounce back from that? If you remember, I remember the Monday of I went back to the gym. Nice. And uh, so you put yourself right into it. Yeah, I yeah. I, di- I didn't want to. I, m- I remember at the time specifically, I really didn't want to, but I I told myself like go because yeah, every day getting to the gym i never had anyone really drive me there right yeah. my sister would drive me occasionally when she had her license but um i would i would pretty much like r- have to run every day to the gym as about like s- five six kilometers uh. like each way yeah so then i would like run there go do all the training sessions and, and i remember I was, I was so pissed off for my first day back yeah. probably wasn't the smartest thing to do after being dropped and I just I I went back to the gym sparred on Monday. It's it's so important. I mean, the thing, whatever it was that that caused you to get up and say uh, you're going to the gym, that thing is is what caused you to bounce back. Yeah. That whether it's willpower, discipline, the drive of getting there because you know your coach is waiting for you, what whatever the hell yeah. that was, right? That thing is is the thing that sometimes pushes out pushes us out of bed and says you you got to get up, right? You got to yeah. get up and do it, and it's. It's really cool that, you know, at, at the age of 15, 16, whatever age it is right now, you you already had that instilled in you that, y- that you could leverage that and and work with it, right? Yeah. And then after that, y- it looks like you went you went on a tear, right? Yeah. You just kept winning, started out with Warpath, and we didn't see you till towards the end of 2012, right? Yeah. Yeah, which was what? Um, tell me about that if you remember. Yeah, I think my first fight with Battlefield was BFL 20, and I was yeah. for I was against Kirk C. Yeah, I remember at the time Kirk was like the man at Battlefield. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was like <laughs> five. Kirk, 
Yeah, Kirk C has been around with us, what, four fights deep he's or something? Yeah, he was there from like, uh, I think our fourth or fifth event maybe yeah. or something. Yeah. He yeah. was, uh, we just, <coughs> we we shot the special edition. I don't know if you listened to it or not, but we were we were in the process of sort of building out our stars as as we had started right? yeah so kirk c was yeah one of the, one of the guys that was coming up yeah he, i remember at that time uh he was he was undefeated at the, I think yeah, five, he, and he was, uh, yeah. five and oh five and oh and oh five and oh yeah something like uh, that. and then uh yeah i got offered i i just fought um uh about five weeks before that and then dfl offered me that fight mm-hmm. and uh i remember i was like all right this is a tough one i remember i remember everyone was telling me that too like in the in the back of my ear all the time. Hey, it's a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough <laughs> one, man. I fucking no, man. I know it's a tough. You can yeah. shut up. And then uh, I remember uh, in the first round, uh, I I ended up catching him with a right hand. I, I dropped him. Second round, kind of out wrestled him. And then yeah, third round he came on strong. Uh, I ended up winning the decision. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was an awesome fight. Uh, he's uh, he's one of the first guys to to go through a war with. Yeah. And. Uh, so you always got to have respect for yeah. people like that, right? And whenever they can give you a good fight like that, it's uh, – yeah, I have a whole different respect. Yeah, them, and right? you put on – you must have put on a show for the fans because you came back, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jay, Jay was really – he was really happy with my performance. I don't think really a lot of people expected me to win that fight. I was about 17, 18 years old when yeah, I fought him. Young, yeah. I was really young. It, it kind of felt like that too to me that everyone was like – almost wanted to bring me in to like, you know, expecting like you to lose. Yeah, expecting me to lose against this guy and I'm like, no man, not, not today. today. <laughs> not today, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 And then you again you went and fought in Warpath. Because Warpath for you tell me about Warpath. Warpath is, is Darwin's baby, right? Yeah, so yeah. That's that's home for yeah, you. Yeah, right? exactly. It was just it was an awesome opportunity because, you know, it's my coach's show right. in my hometown. Yeah. I know uh, he he gave me an awesome deal too with the ticket sales, so yeah. that gave me some motivation, it's just you know. Perfect. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just an awesome setup for me, yeah. uh, and it was a good way for me to get that experience, yeah. you know, as, as an amateur. Like he was putting on shows every couple months, so I was like, okay, fight, 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 and you know, and he wasn't giving me easy fights all the time either. No. So it was, it so was. You're getting good. the experience. I was getting the experience. It's a comfortable sort exactly. of environment. You exactly. got your people there for you. Yeah. Now that that led up to. Mr. Ganey, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like that rivalry and everything. But that, tell me about that first fight, the lead up to that first fight. What do you see, w- you know, in Nick as as you're as you're coming up, hearing about fighting him? Yeah, I just remember that he was uh, he was another one of the guys who was undefeated as an amateur, yeah. and he's making his pro debut. And awesome I, I wrestler. I, exactly. I, I heard he like uh, had uh, he was an Olympic alternate yeah. uh, in, in wrestling and stuff. So. Um, I I anticipated him being a good wrestler. Um, at the time, I was I was two and zero as a pro, yeah. and then he was making his pro debut. And yeah, you know the fight. Uh, I I don't I definitely I've said it in many interviews. In that fight, I did not perform mm-hmm. to my full potential, and I knew that after the fight. But ultimately, I thought I did enough to win that fight. Mm-hmm. You know, I I, I thought it was I w- definitely a controversial, I think, decision at that point. Yeah, yeah. you know, like uh, I was I was kind of shocked at the end when they raised his hand, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking to myself after the fight, though, I'm like, that's your fault. You want to like make all these excuses, and you don't even go out there and perform to your fullest potential. So that was when I really started to actually learn about the mindset, being in a good mindset, leading yeah, into. But it. let's go before that, bro. I mean, r- I remember. I remember specifically after that show when when we were tearing the the cage down, and you had come by and you were talking to Jay. I think you were uh, standing around. You were devastated. I mean, you were you were almost in tears. I I remember specific like you were wearing wearing this blue shirt, and I'm like, yeah. this kid is just not like yeah. he he's not in a good place right yeah, now. Yeah, right? I, I yeah you're yeah that's right. Actually, now you bring it up, yeah, you I remember, do remember right? that. I yeah. do remember that. Yeah, I was. I was really upset. You know, like uh, MMA to me has been like my it's baby, life, right? right? You know, yeah. that that's that's the way I live my life. And for me to to fail at at what at the mission I'm trying to accomplish, you know, it it it, it yeah. I remember that night. I was I was devastated. I uh, I I went for a run at four o'clock in the morning that night. Wow. I was so pissed off, and I was I was. Just 
so angry at myself and um you know at the end of the day they say don't leave it in the hands of that's judges, right right you it's know, on so you yeah so how did you bounce back from that was that difficult to to pick yourself back up and dust yourself off and get back in the gym or or had you done it before and now you're like well i, I know how to deal with this yeah uh, i mean it was just after that uh it was a lot of uh a lot more adversity I had to come. I, I, I tore my MCL getting ready okay. for another fight. So that was – that truly sucked. Uh, mm -hmm. So – and then when my knee got healthy, I went to to Montreal. I, I moved there for seven months while I was there. You I were training at TriStar? Yeah, I was, I was training at TriStar. Yeah. Um, dealt with some injuries while I was there too. Um, but every day I was just was in the gym, in the gym, in the gym. Like, nothing can really take away my focus. Yeah. Uh, like, m training is the way I bounce back. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really channel through training, through fighting, yeah. getting better at something, and growing as a martial artist. How right? hard is it, though, when you're, uh, when you're training for all these? Because you've had a lot of fights fall through, right? How hard is it to, like, train for a fight, get really motivated for it, and then see that uh, the whole thing just get gets falls through because either the guy doesn't show up or... Uh, someone gets injured or they don't make weight or some stupid thing like that. How hard is it to like continue to like keep yourself motivated to like keep pushing yourself through? It's it's definitely a test. You know, it, it's it's definitely it's definitely challenging when you you constantly you're okay, we got a contract sent to you, boom, two weeks out from the event, whole thing gets cancelled or one week out from the fight, hey, buddy's knee is injured sorry we can't and we you've can't had you. you've had like six or seven of those uh, that's I not uh, yeah <laughs> it's yeah. it's insane how many fights i've you you're supposed just to had have bad luck with that. yeah i i mean or or things that happen like okay we got you a fight on this show one of the most recent ones we got you a fight uh they sent me a contract and then i go i go to training or come back online and i see they announced my opponent that i got sent a contract for is now fighting someone else I'm oh like, what? Uh, what well, you know? And you like, find uh, out uh, through, through social, social media. media. It's like, what? What's going on, man? I'm calling promoters, and I'm like, what? What's going on here? Uh, and then it's like, yeah, you know, the camp doesn't really want it. You know, there's not a lot to gain by fighting a guy. Like, I'm like, man, like, come on, like, what are what are we in this sport for, right? Like, it's yeah. unprofessional. It's right? unprofe yeah, it's yeah, unprofessional, yeah. and it's just, you know, like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm a tough fight for anyone deal with it we're in a sport yeah. where we're here to fight you know and I, it's hard man yeah like you it's again like we were we were talking we see it all the time it's devastating for us when fights fall through like that but you know you you put in the time the energy your body through hell and then all of a sudden for no rhyme or reason sometimes there's a legitimate reason yeah for it, right yeah exactly Dude I've gets injured you I've understand I've, ha I've had to pull out of fights before i, yeah. I told my i told my mcl i i got a staph infection rooted into my bone Oof. uh yeah i mean yeah. there there are legit reasons why you would pull out of a yeah. fight right but yeah. i mean for no uh it's just almost it's almost disrespectful when it's just there's no reason. Like, at mm -hmm. least give me – make up a lie for me. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. tell me something. You know, tell yeah. me something, right? Put like, some energy yeah, yeah, But, like, give me, <laughs> give me, like, a legit lie, you know? Yeah. Or, 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 you know, uh, w and at the end of the day, I, I love training. I love g waking up every day and going to the gym. Yeah. And that will never stop. If I, if I was not competing – I would still be doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I love being at the gym. Mind you, I would need to figure out another source of income. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, like, I, I love going to the gym every day, competing, and it's it's disheartening when these things happen, but yeah. I know where I'm going, and I, I know I see myself at the, end of, at the end of the road, and I know I'm going to accomplish everything I want to accomplish. So I just have faith in the journey. Nice. Yeah. What so what made you come back to Vancouver from TriStar? Sounds like you were, you know, you were training at at a top top gym there. What what's the story? Why did you come back? You know, I I just feel like you have to have a home base, mm -hmm. right? And TriStar, as much as I love the people, the coaches, and how many like friends and and relationships I built over there. No, we're talking about TriStar Montreal. Yeah, TriStar Montreal. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, TriStar yeah. Montreal. When I was out there, um, 
I just can never really get that place to feel like my home, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I I just feel that in order to perform at your best, you have to be in a in a good mindset, right? And out there, I mean, it was it was difficult to get jobs. It was it, there. There's so many things that that were happening out there that just made it tough to to live there. Plus. No one, trust me, you do not want to live in Montreal in the winter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's brutal, it's, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. And, you know, I, I just love being around, uh, being in BC, right? You know, it feels like my home. And now the training out here is at a world-class level, too. Right. So if I can be near my siblings, my everything. friends, my, my dad, my mom, you know, all of that, it just makes way more sense for me to be there. Like, all those guys there, they have that family base. You mm-hmm. know, they, they have... They have their their family there, their friends there, right? And then it was always just me and Cajun being like, hey, your Christmas dinners we'd spend together, yeah. you know, everything <laughs> yeah. like that. So uh, uh, it just feels good to be back home, you know, mm. and I'm definitely going to continue uh, going to Montreal and, and training out there, going there months at a time. But as of right now, this, is, this is your home this base. This is my home. Right. So let's talk about the lead up to that next, the second Nick fight. Yeah. You know, from our perspective, watching this, there's a lot of shit talk <laughs> between this the two. This is a world title fight, right? That was the, yeah. the t- world title. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. F- yeah, it was for the first. Uh, that was the first time the bantamweight belt was up for grabs as a pro. Yeah, yeah. we, we, we were seeing a lot of <laughs> just like on social <laughs> media. Yeah, between no, the I two remember of you. doing the interview with you guys uh, yeah. through Skype, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you guys were going back and forth. But at first, I mean, uh, you know. Nick was really fired up about whatever you guys said after the first fight that you guys had. So he was like feeding himself for this yeah. next fight with it. And after the interview was over, was when all like the the good stuff happened. Yeah, you know, yeah, just, you know, like just going off. It was it was interesting. Yeah. yeah, it was truly one of those things where that wasn't for show. Why it, was there so much animosity? I mean, it's <laughs> y- you know. Uh, I think we're just two like really really fierce competitors, yeah. and uh, I remember, I remember uh, after the fight, I personally messaged him, being respectful, and asked, "Would you fight? Will you fight me again?" Then it was like an excuse. Uh, well, uh, I remember right in the cage after he came up to me, he shook my hand, and he was like, "Hey, it's okay, bro." Like he said, "I don't know." He said to me, "I don't know who won the fight, man. Like we can do it again, bro. It was uh, like it was an honor to fight you. There's all this respect." I was like, "Cool." And then I remember I, I personally messaged him. I said, hey, man, uh, do you want to fight for the next show? No, uh, oh, I don't think so, blah, blah, blah. Then I was like, do you want to fight for the next show? Blah, blah, blah. N- nothing really said. And then just finally got to the point where I was like, I want to fight this guy again. You know, <laughs> like, I, like, I want to. <laughs> it's definitely me instigating it yeah. uh, for sure. Like, I, I, I kept messaging him. And then, and then uh, you know, I, I just saw how. He would like kind of carry himself at the at the shows when he was with Lions, yeah. and it would really it would really bother me, you know. And uh, was he was getting under your skin. Yeah, it would. Uh, and then I remember, just uh, when he fought my teammate Craig McLean for the second time, mm-hmm. and he, he beat him, and I I walked in. It was actually funny. No, like, I don't that think was that was at that war at that show, war pass. I, 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 yeah, I don't there think was, uh, it, some bad blood in the cage after. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't yeah. think it really many people saw it because it wasn't. I wasn't doing it to like try and get the cameras on me. I what walked. Did up, you, what did you do? I, I, I walked up to him while he's in the cage taking pictures, and I said, "I said let's let's fight." I was like, "I was like, quit trying to duck this. Let's go. Let's fight." And then his coach was like, oh, we don't want to do this right here." I'm like, "I'm not trying to start a fight. I'm trying to get it settled for in the cage." <laughs> and then, uh, and then right after that, I messaged him. I was like, I was, I was serious. And I think I, I said some uh, choice words because it was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to like stay here and lie to you guys. I, I think I was like, I, I think I called him a coward or, so, or something like. That. I, I don't remember exactly all the words I said. Um, but then, um, uh, I remember I was like, let's go, let's go. And then, uh, I think. There was a a thread that got posted from BFL like who should Nick Gainey fight again, <laughs> and then I said who the fuck do you think or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, I commented, and then uh, and then uh, BFL replied back like all right let's do this for a title, and I was like I'm in, and then Nick uh, Nick agreed too, and then yeah I was in a powerful powerful place before that fight. I was I really felt 
like very confident that I was gonna my my preparation was like the best it's ever been. I was the sharpest I've ever felt in my career, and mm. I was very confident I was gonna I was gonna win that fight. Very confident. How did the fight go? Yeah, I ended so up. Not everybody has seen the fight, so go ahead. Yeah, it was it was a really <laughs> really exciting fight. Um, I got to showcase a lot with my with my stand up in that fight, and then in the third round, he got a takedown. I swept him, and then. I caught him with a uh, high elbow guillotine. I put him to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So it went. It went. It went your way that yeah, night. Yeah, I actually, I, I thought that's how the fight would end. Uh, too. Did the animosity end there? Yeah, it did. Okay. Yeah, we actually, uh, we we talked quite a bit after the fight. Um, just uh, Nick just in person after the uh, fight. Or was no, it not again so online a, a little, a little bit after the fight. I saw him in the casino, and I just said to him, I was like, "Hey, man, you know." Uh, honestly, all shit aside, man, like, I was, just, you know, we're just two people trying to get fights, right? And, like, <laughs> yeah. for, for me, it, it was so hard getting fights. So I'm yeah. just like, hey, man, it's no, it's no hard feelings or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I, I told him, like, I, I've said in interviews to you, I'm not going to pretend, like, be this fake person. Like, oh, you know, uh, like, I love you and all this, right? But I was like, yeah, I have, I have respect for you, man. And, uh uh, I said we don't have to like each other, but I'm always gonna have respect for you as as a competitor. And then we we actually sh- like exchanged some Facebook messages, some text messages, and he he was we were talking about how like both of our fights taught each other a lot, and we like opened up to each other, and it was actually mm-hmm. really cool. And I really got to know like the true version of Nick, mm-hmm. and I I was like he's a great guy. He really is. He's he's not the guy he was portraying yeah. <laughs> in the in the interview right he definitely yeah. isn't but you know it also created a lot of hype i don't think there was there's been a fight in bfl for a while that people wanted to see it as much as that fight well, like people uh, uh, yeah there's a lot of animosity for sure and it it seemed real and then th- the thing is you didn't have you had a couple things canceled there but then you fought him again right was that like your next immediate Oh, he's never fought him again. That was okay. uh, he only yeah. fought him twice. Yeah, yeah. That's but we right. should he set up the trilogy, though, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think Nick. I think Nick's like walking. He, last fight was at one fifty or yeah, something. I was he's like, uh, he's gone up uh, a weight class, I think. And yeah, uh, he fought we, um, Christian. He fought yeah, Christian Shemaine. Yeah. yeah, we. S- it's funny with Nick as well. It's he's like not in. He's not. In, uh, he took a fight out. In, uh, he's out of town. He's in yeah. Calgary. Zed right promotion. Yeah, 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 he's fighting Zed promotion. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. He's gonna do really well in this. Next you know fight. what? The thing is, like, we we talk about watching watching you guys grow as fighters, as as people, right? You you know, you come in, you're 18 years old, and then you go through. <laughs> now you're 25, 24. Nick is one of those characters where he's. The last time I saw him, I almost didn't believe it was nick it was like what oh the yeah. hell like you're such yeah. a he what the hell like is is that really <laughs> nick? yeah right? so he's it's there's yeah. just so much um d- transformation literally Definitely. transformation of personality character everything. and then it's funny you know how they say how you do one thing is how you do everything right you can't we don't see how people live their lives but you watch someone come in and and perform in the cage, and you can see th- they're loose, they're moving around, they're you know they're they're smiling, they're not like li- tight and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it shows that he's you know I, I don't know where he's at in his life right now, but at least the last the last fight we saw him, he was literally the only word I can use is transformation. He's a different person. He's happy. Definitely. He's happy. Yeah. 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 He's definitely. Happy. I I know I noticed that too. Just his yeah. whole uh, like I've seen him at shows before. Uh, when I wasn't fighting him, and I'm like, "Who oh, the fuck is this guy?" Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, and, and and then I saw him when he was actually fighting my teammate Christian before, yeah. and I'm like, "Yeah, he's actually being super friendly." And even yeah. after the fight, like he was he was upset that he lost, but he handled it very respectfully. He looked uh, very improved too. Like his striking looked a lot better in that second fight too. Uh, in that fight after me with Christian, yeah. Um, he yeah he just seems to. One of the words I guess I would use for him too is evolved. Yeah, you know, like he he seems evolved technically as a human, and I think he, when he started training with, uh, Cole Smith and those yeah, guys up with the Squamish, sound, yeah. I th- I think that really, uh, did wonders for like his character, yeah. and character building, and everything like but that. I, I want to make sure this isn't 
you know, it's not that his gym lines. Oh yeah, was no, bad no, definitely. I think he just has the right people. It's just p- yeah. dip, different people sync exactly. with different I, exactly, people. Right? Exactly, exactly. There's, like there's this gym is bad. This gym is exa- not exactly. Right? Exactly, and there's because I, I mean I love Polly. He's a good guy. He, all those guys. Yeah, at, uh, at there's Lions actually there's guys. guys from his gym that come over and cross train us and yeah. uh, and try to Vancouver. So I mean. I yeah. don't have I don't have no that yeah, yeah I think it, it's just the right fit for him exactly. is all is yeah. all I meant by that and we'll know? see maybe there will be a trilogy well, no, Trevor I think it's like the gym. Nah. <laughs> 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 no, I'll agree with Trevor. Watch, just watch Polly and Elias. <laughs> yeah. They're going to swarm and out. Trevor will change <laughs> his mind slowly. Like, ah, yeah. Is there a back door? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have to no, make sure. No, we love Alliance Gym. Yeah, yeah. No, they're great competitors and stuff. Yeah, they're a great gym. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, so Are you trying to set up a trilogy fight? I, though, I am. I think a, I think a trilogy <laughs> fight. Anytime you have a story where you guys are at like a really high level and it's really competitive that you should have a trilogy fight because uh, if you have like one fight where it's like it was a split decision i think in the first yeah. fight right yeah kind of up in the air you didn't know the second fight was a little bit decisive because you guys both improved but you're both in different directions thinking like after six months or a year after you guys ha- have had a chance to like grow again as both individuals and as fighters you should get the opportunity to test yourselves against each other because you know what kind of level of competition you're going to bring to each other because um, if you're already fighting at a really high level, you should continue on your journey with somebody that's able to like bring the best out of you as, a, as an athlete and as like an individual. So maybe realistically a year from now, six months from now, you guys should test yourselves again and see where you're at again because I think it'll be a good opportunity for you guys and you're both fighting at a really high level. I mean... Uh, yeah. You're a world champion, right? Yeah. He had the opportunity to fight for a belt. He's going to have, I mean, I'm sure he's going to win a lot of fights in Z oh, promotion. Definitely. Uh, win yeah. a lot of fights in Z promotions. I think him getting another opportunity to fight you at uh, in a future setting would be a great opportunity for you guys. Yeah, de- definitely. Like, f- for me, I'm now at the point where it's like, just get me a fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's know. so hard to. I- right? Exactly. Right? I'm, I'm not one of those people like, uh, where I'll be like, oh, I, I beat him. He he beat me, uh, you know. So I yeah, the I first one was an amateur fight, right? No, it, it was, was a, it, it was a pro, pro fight. Was yeah, it? Oh. yeah, it was it was a pro fight. But oh, yeah, no, it's that kind of even sells it even more. It's not like it's uh it's like an amateur rivalry, right? Like it's professional. We're both fighting at a high level, you know, and we're both very good competitors. And you know, Nick's Nick's a beast. I've 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 said that publicly a lot of times. And yeah, anytime I can test myself against another against another high level martial artist, I'm always up for it, right? Um, just no matter if he's gonna start fighting at uh light lightweight or welterweight. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <my> big boy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I definitely like if, if if he can make the weight and he wants to do it, I would I would love to do it again. Like both fights were fun. Even the second fight when I well even though the the ending was very decisive, it was it was, it was a, a competitive forth, fight. Yeah. It was it was a competitive fight, right? Like I didn't go over there and steamroll over him. Like he no. made me, he, he made me, er, he made me earn that victory, right? Yeah. And you always have to respect that. So I, I'm in definite, definite agreement with you. Do you guys, um, because right now you're at the professional, you had how many pro fights? Five, or is it three? Uh, five? I've had six. Six pro fights. Do you guys look, um, because we have a really talented amateur pool, we have a lot of guys that are, we have a couple guys that just won the uh, amateur title as well. Do you guys look at the guys that are coming up? Because right now, obviously, I think you're looking at like Cole Smith getting that fight back one more time, right? Do you look at back at um, any of the other guys that are coming up that are looking at you as like um, an opportunity to kind of get up there as well that, yeah. are, that, that haven't even had a pro fight yet? They're, they're coming up. Who who are you looking at right now? Um. Well, one guy at, that I know is talking about turning pro is uh, Taylor Christopher, mm. and I know he's got a good amateur record and everything like that. But I mean, it almost like kind of looks bad on me to as as like a professional to like want to call out. But I, know, I you know but at at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get fights. That's yeah. all, that's all I'm trying to do is just get fights, right? So, uh, personally, BFL in my opinion has the most talented amateur roster out of any promotion that i know about Uh, um, it's just like you guys uh, i've seen people come from the states like rick little with uh spokane uh the sick jiu-jitsu guys 
they come up and they say, wow, man, like the amateur fights are not amateur fights. No, they're definitely like, not. They're like professional fights, yeah. basically. I mean, other than like the a few modifications to the rules and the gloves and stuff. Yeah. They, they're basically they, pro they, 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 fights in like a, a couple minutes less. But it, I mean, these exactly. guys. Exactly. Like, like for me, my, all my amateur fights, I didn't have those modified rules. So I was, you're throwing head kicks, you're throwing knees to the body, you're ground and pounding, you're allowed certain, certain leg locks still. Like, uh, my amateur fights were wars, you know. And now looking back, I'm like, I would like to combine the amateur <laughs> record to my <laughs> pro <laughs> record, and I could be in the UFC now, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, d- definitely. Um, there's there's so many talented guys coming up to you, and the sport's only evolving even more and more. So there's definitely guys coming up that, uh, if anyone at BFL wants to fight, I'm just letting that be known. Anyone wants to fight, <laughs> I'm up for it. Please, I need to <laughs> fight so badly. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, that's, that's the way you want it, though, right? You want to be able to take on all comers and yeah, I- exactly, right? Like I'm I've never been the guy who picks and chooses my fights, so I'm I'm up for. I got, I got a question for you. What's that? So um, we've had fights like fall through before because we've had two top guys that are uh, that have trained together before, and they may have like trained. You, you know, you have gyms that do cross training and stuff. They they come over, they train with a guy, and they're like, "This guy's my brother. I'll never yeah. fight my brother." Right? And there's that level of like uh, camaraderie that you guys have where you're tr- uh, pushing each other to get to the next level or whatever. But there comes a time where you guys have to eventually cross paths because if you don't, then there's no fights for you guys. And if you guys can't fight, then what's the point of like training for all these other fights, right? I mean, yeah, the talent pool in BC is it's pretty big, but it's still it's pretty small, right? Yeah, it's 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 talented, but it's shallow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What do you think about uh, guys that have like trained together? Because we've had guys like Ash and uh, Dan that yeah. trained together. They, prime they, example. They, prime example, and those guys they. There was an amazing story there as well where they, uh, you know, they had to go train each other for fights and stuff and push each other and stuff. And they fought previously in the past and then it came full circle where they had to, like, come back and fight. Right. And they're back training with each other now. Back right? training yeah. with each other now. How do you think about uh, or what do you feel about guys that have trained each with each other? Like um, before in the past, I think Gary and... Uh, Jeremy Kenny were supposed to fight each other because yeah. they both won the featherweight title. Yeah. And the, that fight never materialized and now they're helping each other train for a lot of Jeremy's like world like UFC fights and yeah. stuff. Uh but that fight never happened I think because uh for some reason but would you ever consider like fighting somebody that you train with if it meant if it meant like a world title or if it meant getting yourself to the next level? Um, I think there's a, a certain degree where you have to push things aside. Uh, if I think it's very different if you are like a cross training with them, you're, you know, you, you're in their lives. Like I've done that where I've, ha- I have fought someone that I knew and I was actually like, yeah, I like you, man, but I just need a fight. Right. But for instance, like a guy like Craig McLean, who, who fights in, in BFL, I would, uh, to be honest, I, w- I won't fight him. Because to me, I haven't – he's not just a training partner to me. He really is, like, a brother to me. And I – for me personally, there's certain morals that I carry that won't allow me to do that. Um, As much of uh, a sick fight me and Craig would put on (laughs) for the BFL show, like, trust me, uh, like – our you sparring your first Craig. Don't 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 <laughs> don't talk about it too much because Jay will listen. Yeah, to yeah, it. yeah, no, no, but but well, yeah, exactly. Right. But, but what, what I mean by that is like I think there's a level where it's like, OK, you guys are in each other's lives and stuff. But you like at the end of the day, OK, I don't have a fight. You don't have a fight. OK, let's fight. But then there's certain lines that you just don't cross. Like revolution to me is like a family to me. Mm-hmm. So anyone that is in that gym never Will I fight? I mean, me and Craig talk about it. the one time we'll fight is like, let's let's do it for a UFC title. Yeah. You know, absolutely, absolutely, I'll do it then. But for for right now, me and Craig are gonna do so much better by pushing each other every day in training and helping each other get ready for these fights. And I truly love the guy. You know, like uh, I'm not just saying that because we're team. Like I I love that dude. So I I would never be able to get myself to even like motivate myself to get up to go punch this guy in the face you know um but i think there are instances where you got to take it case by case if you guys cross train with each other 
and that's it. You guys just help each other prepare. You know, I think you have to fight. You know, I, I, I truly do. Like, there, there's some guys I've trained with in the past. If I got offered to fight them right now, I would say yes. Yeah. Right away. Let's Who go. is it? <laughs> put, uh, put me on the spot. Uh, I'm just kidding. You don't have to yeah. say a name, but uh, I mean, there are guys that you've trained with in the past that you probably would. Yeah, uh, 100%. 100%. There's guys in the past I would fight, but uh, um, anyone that's from TriStar Revolution, I, I, I won't fight. You have trouble fighting him. Yeah, yeah I, I, w- I would, even if I got offered like uh, a sick opportunity, I, don't, I would not be able to fight them. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that Cole Smith fight. He brought him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, like yeah. And it's funny that um, that Nick ended up going and training with Cole. But how was that fight? The Cole Smith, you're holding the belt, right? At yeah. That point in time. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was defending my belt. Uh, it was my first fight after Nick, and yeah, <laughs> a bloody fight. <laughs> One of the bloodiest, probably. Yeah. I think, right? Yeah, it yeah. was a uh, bloody. It was entertaining. It's a um, great fight. You know, uh, it it was it was like a war, and you know, Cole Cole brought it that night, and you know, I, I brought it too. There was just uh, some big mistakes, I think, uh, as far as me fighting emotional early, that mm. that cost me. Why were you emotional? I was just going through a lot before that fight again. You Tell know. me about it. What's going on in your life? Uh well, I was I ended up homeless yet again in my life. Um, I was living on my coach Cajun's you know, couch. There mm-hmm. was there's so much shit, you know, just going on b- before the fight. And uh, so wait, just because you figured out how to shit, uh, how to get out of shit, shit still happens. To you? Yeah, yeah, it's it's no shit, shit still happens. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, exactly, right. It sh- shit still happens. But uh, no, I think at the end of the day, um, what what that fight taught me a lot of is just being able to to rise above that in comp in competition right like there's there's shit weighing in on your mind there's there's stuff going on but ultimately when you get in the cage you're responsible for you Mm -hmm. right so um that fight i think i think that fight was supposed to happen uh and i was supposed to lose that fight because now everything before fight i make sure my mental preparation my mental preparation is so much more on point and How so do you much prepare more mentally? I just I started getting more into visualization work, uh, into sweet grass, smudging. I've always done that, but mm-hmm. I've I just make it a regular occurrence in my life to do that almost every day. Um, just for people who don't know who Darwin Douglas is, he's uh what's what's his uh band that he's from? Uh Stolo Nation. Yeah, and yeah. he's obviously First Nation. So you're following some of the practices. Yeah, right? I'm f- following a lot of the practices that they do that he originally introduced me to, and um, so does Cajun, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. does Cajun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they both introduced me t- uh, to it, and yeah, I started getting a lot more into spiritual work and spiritual guidance. And uh, how is that affecting your life? Tell us a little bit about it. The reason I'm poking and trying to get that out is, again, that could be the very thing that someone's waiting to hear out there and they could go do something right now and pull them out of that situation because you know having having a s- spiritual system that you follow or even a practice that whether you want to call it spiritual or not that it just allows you to take a break from just the mundane everyday stuff yeah and, and sort of have that reflection introspection of to towards yourself helps you out so i just want to hear your your experience of of how that affects you i think it it affects me with just giving my mind more clarity mm-hmm. you know there, there's like you said there's so much stuff that happens in your every day-to-day life you forget sometimes to just sit sometimes you just have to sit reflect and be thankful for everything that you you have mm-hmm. right and um for me i find it gives me a lot of clarity mentally um it puts me in a place where you are literally forced to be in just in that moment, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's you're meditating, you're smudging, you're doing visualization work, it's all being in that current moment, right? And so much of the time we live in the past or we live in the future, we, we're looking towards the future and we forget to be present sometimes, mm-hmm. right? So what I find that does, it helps grounds me and keeps me balanced on being in that present moment, right? Mm-hmm. And when you can learn to be in that moment, it will 
it will it will show in so many different avenues. It'll show in just how you carry yourself in your every day to day life. It'll show um I find personally the best zone to be in when you compete is to just be in a zone where you're present and you're not thinking about what is he gonna do. You're what am I gonna flow, do? You're right? just I'm gonna yeah. go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. And that a lot that I just find all these practices I'm doing are gonna translate to so many positive things in my life. Mm-hmm. So um I really just do it a lot of the time to to make sure that I don't forget to be in that current moment to clear your mind and just you're not reflecting you're not looking forward you're just being one with nature you're being one in that moment so right it's awesome there's a there's a big lesson here that you that that loss that at that moment of time could look like the worst thing possible in your life that's happened you finally got to that point where you're holding the belt your first uh, title defense you yeah. lose it in that fashion you put yeah. your heart and soul out there blood everywhere and you lose it it could look devastating like this is it like i thought i'm finally on my yeah. way and everything falls apart but looking back you say it was meant to be that was the yeah. greatest thing that could have happened to me right so sometimes when we're in that w- down there in that mess we can't see that so this is what what's meant to be and great things are going to come from this and and it's it's awesome that you have the ability to reflect back on that and say i learned how to do this i learned yeah. how to do that as a result yeah of this fight so you're really you're fighting somebody else but you're learning about yourself yeah it, it, ex- exactly and uh, you know uh especially too when you go through like a war that that was um mm-hmm. You can, like, one thing I can confidently look back and say about the fight, I did not quit. I did not just go there, fold, and give up. I, I fought to the end to the point where I was just taking so much damage. And ultimately, you know, he got the rear naked choke and he sunk it in. But I, I biggest thing I learned from that fight, too, it wasn't a technical. Or, uh, there was technical errors made, but they stemmed from an emotional state. They stemmed from a negative energy that was I carried with me before that fight. Mm. You know, so um, when I went and fought again, so my last fight where I, when I competed for Elite One, yeah, um, I made sure that I wasn't carrying any negative energy with me because I'm a very energy sensitive person. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I'm that person. If my friends are going through something, I'm going through something, right? right. And I, I, j- I, like I feel a lot. So um, I made sure that I I went there, and every day I was I was doing meditation, I was smudging, and I just made sure every day I'm in this current moment. And uh, when I was preparing for for that fight, I took on super short notice. And I remember when I was in the back room, I was just in such a powerful current moment. You know, I was I was in the I was very present, and I was very aware of how I was feeling in that exact moment. And it it showed it, in your it performance. Showed, uh, I was so calm. I was so relaxed. There was little to no technical errors that were made, and mm-hmm. I just was able to perform. I, f- I feel like at my full potential. That's awesome, yeah. man. Well, I just want to say thank you for coming out. You know, you're you're young. You've gone through so many different transformations, and things are only getter getting better and better for you. Before we end this today, is there uh, any way people can get a hold of you if they maybe they want to reach out, they need your help, or they want you for for whatever reason? Yeah. How do they get a hold of you? Social media. Yeah, yeah. So social media. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook, um, Instagram. Um, yeah, and just search for your name. Yeah, yeah. Just search search for my name okay. on Facebook or Instagram, and yeah, I'm definitely open to to if I can help anyone in any way, especially like you know any troubled youth they're going through anything right now that's why i got a job too with uh with uh troubled youth nice. you know being caregiver for troubled youth i really want to help impact the the lives of of younger people too so if anyone needs any help you wanna give uh, back. i want i want to be able to give back and uh yeah i'd love to hear other people's stories too sweet so man thank yeah. you for sharing your life yeah. story with us i know it's difficult to to make yourself vulnerable and yeah and talk about those difficult moments yeah. Thanks a lot, brother. I, I appreciate it. Yep. I appreciate we'll it. We'll see you back in the cage soon. Whether yeah. it's against Cole, Nick, or whoever. Uh, yeah, maybe. Any, anyone. Uh, <coughs> uh, Craig McLean. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, uh, J, 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 are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, the J don't listen to this. It's not happening. All right.